I always tell people, listen, if you want to get more leases, you've got to have a process and you've got to have a deep understanding of the why behind that process. It's going to make your job so much easier as a property manager or leasing agent when you not only have a process, but you understand the why. Well, today, I'm going to just quickly break down some of my philosophies behind the stages of the perfect leasing process and match those up to the renter's journey in their rental process. And I think this video, I think it's going to give you a much deeper understanding of what you need to do, when you need to do it, why you need to do it, and the psychology behind what's going on in your renter's mind. Hey everybody, my name is Matt Easton. I'm the founder of Leasing University, the number one sales training for property managers and leasing agents in the world. You can check us out at leasinguniversity.com or you can call us anytime at 888-735-7451. And I encourage you, if you even work at all in property management, if you're even in the zip code of property management, this is the YouTube channel for you. Please consider hitting that subscribe button, but more importantly, we all know subscriptions doesn't mean anything. Hit the notification so that you can be notified when videos like this come available. So let's talk about the perfect leasing process and how that breaks down into the renter's journey right now. All right, step number one in the perfect leasing process, kind of a no-brainer here. We got to greet the prospect, all right? You've got to greet the prospect. You can't really rent somebody an apartment unless you answer the phone or you get up out of your desk and greet that prospect. Now, where does that match up in the renter's journey? Where it matches up in the renter's journey is we want to reduce fear and frustration. I want you to think about that right now. When people are looking for a new home, when they're looking to move, moving is scary. It's terrifying. Not only is it scary, but it's something that we don't have a lot of experience doing. Even folks that move all the time, maybe move 20 times in their life. Consider how many times you buy coffee or how many times you pump gas, or how many times you go to a movie or how many times you buy lunch. 20 times is not that much, so people don't have a lot of information on the move. This move is scary and it's very frustrating. When you greet the prospect, you want to do everything in your power to reduce that fear, to reduce that frustration. Some of the things that a lot of you are doing right now in your process that are actually doing the opposite is you're not answering the phone. By not answering the phone and sending them to voicemail, oh, that makes them even more frustrated, right? They're doing something they don't want to do. They take the time. They finally get up the courage to make that call and you don't answer the phone. It increases their frustration. So if you're answering the phone within three rings, you're going to be reducing their frustration. Now I want you to think about this. How many of you have one of those robots that answers the phone? Thank you for calling awesome apartments. In case of a fire or life-threatening emergency, hang up and dial 911. If this is a maintenance emergency, i.e. water coming through your ceiling or uh, the foundation is totally broken apart, well, press two. Think about that. You're not only increasing their frustration because they have to deal with a robot, same way they have to do it when they uh, buy an airplane ticket or uh, call their cable company, any one of those frustrating life events that we have, but you're increasing their fear. When the first thing that the renter hears is, in case of a fire, ah, that doesn't sound like it's making me feel any more comfortable, or life-threatening emergency. That's the definition of fear right there, life-threatening emergency. So I want you to think about that in terms of the first stage of the perfect leasing process. You've got to greet that prospect. We want to be upbeat. We want to be cheerful. We want to be able to say the right things on the phone. We teach you what the right things are to say on the phone at Leasing University, by the way. And when somebody comes into the leasing office, you want to have a very specific process for standing up, making eye contact with them, and again, saying those right things that are going to reduce their frustration and they're going to reduce their fear. 
Okay, the second step in the perfect leasing process is you have to determine your renter's wants and needs. You've got to know what their wants and needs are. Where determining their wants and needs matches up in the renter's journey is you have to establish trust and rapport with your renter. Your renter is now at the point where you've reduced their fear and frustration and they're looking to establish some sort of trust and rapport with you. This is another area where untrained leasing agents get it totally wrong. They take this time talking all about them their features, their amenities, their location, their rent, their property, them, 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 them. This is the opportunity for you to talk about the renter, the renter, the renter, the renter, the renter, and the renter. Their hopes, their dreams, their wants and needs. You are needing to build that trust and rapport with them. You are there as their trusted advisor, their professional that's going to help them. A lot of times your renter does not even understand what's most important to them. So this becomes an experience between you and them where you're working together a lot like a doctor would work with a patient to figure out, well, what is really the root cause of the pain that they're experiencing with their current apartment? What is their current situation looking like? And what is that ideal living situation look like? When you establish trust and rapport, it allows you to figure out, okay, how wide is that gap? between where they're at right now and their ideal living situation and you can put a value on that gap. That is the definition of building trust and rapport. Think about going to that doctor and that doctor saying, okay, here's what we've got going on. Your blood pressure is way too high right now, okay? We're kind of in a life-threatening experience, but don't worry, we've got some diet, we've got medications, and we've got an exercise plan. We're gonna get you back down to not only your optimal blood pressure, but your optimal weight. You're gonna be feeling great, you're gonna have more energy, you're gonna live a lot longer, things are going to be great. You need to establish that trust and rapport. Think about if the doctor just talked about, hey, we've got drugs, we've got drugs, we've got drugs, we've got more drugs. We've got drugs uh, to make your hair grow. We've got drugs to help you get pregnant. We've got drugs uh, to reduce your blood pressure. And you know what, we've, if you got foot pain, we've got drugs for foot pain. They're just talking about features, amenities, and location and pricing. They're not learning about their patient. That would be a horrible doctor. This phase in the buyer's journey, the renter's journey, you want to establish that trust and rapport. Step number three in the perfect leasing process is you need to select an apartment for your renter and build value in that apartment. So many times I see leasing professionals out there that all they do is tour the entire community, show their prospects everything that's available, and they're not being that trusted advisor, that trusted professional that is selecting an apartment for their prospect based on what their prospect told them and showing them the value in that apartment. How this matches up in the renter's journey is you're actually going to show them now at this point the value in bridging that gap, the value in going from where they're living right now to living at your apartment community. This helps the prospect in two ways. Number one, it shows them that they're working with an expert. They're not just working with a tour guide. This is not a, uh, I'm gonna shop around and make the decision for myself. And more importantly, number two, what do you think your renters are afraid of most? When I ask this question during our Leasing University live events, I always hear, oh, they're afraid of spending too much money or you know, they're afraid that they're not gonna like the apartment. Those are all great answers. The number one thing though that your renter is afraid of is making a bad decision. When they're being difficult with you and they're giving you a bunch of objections, the root of most of those objections is the fact of, I'm not sure that this is the best decision and I don't want to make a bad decision. When you act as that trusted advisor or expert and you help select an apartment, hey, here's what I've chosen for you, I wanna show it to you, here's the reason I've selected this apartment for you, here's what we're gonna look at when we walk in, we're gonna turn to the left and you're gonna see the kitchen. The reason why I thought of this particular floor plan for you is you told me 
that cooking is your stress relief. It's an amazing open floor plan, and the kitchen is a big part of that open floor plan. So you can do your cooking, you can watch uh, television in the main room because you can see it very easily. That's why I'm gonna show you this particular floor plan first. You want to reduce their fear that they're making a bad decision, and you want to show them that you are the expert. Okay, step four of the perfect leasing process is you need to make a proposal. And anyone who's been through leasing university training knows exactly what I'm talking about when I talk make a proposal. This is not we're getting a bunch of contracts. This is for sure not we're closing the lease. We are simply making a proposal. If you wanna learn more about how to make a proposal, go over to leasinguniversity.com and check out our training there. What is the benefit to the renter in you making a proposal? This is the point in their journey where they need to decide to decide. Matt, what are you talking about decide to decide? It's gonna make a lot of sense right now. When I say decide to decide, think about the last time you had a big decision that you need to make. Maybe you were purchasing a car. Maybe it's your own apartment. Maybe it's uh, you were gonna get engaged. There is always a point in that renter's journey where they're like, you know what? I think it's time for me to make a decision. I'm gonna pivot from just looking around or just thinking about where I'm gonna to live to decision mode. That means I'm gonna really, really narrow down my choices and I'm ready to make a decision. When you make a proposal for your renter, it helps put them in that mental position that okay, it's game time, it is time to decide and you're getting much, much closer to them either saying yes, I want to sign the lease here and live here, or no, this is not the right community for me. If you're hearing things a lot like, you know what, I need to think about it, we just need some more time to think about it, chances are you've skipped the proposal step in the perfect leasing process and their brain has not shifted over to I need to decide to decide. You want that shift to happen when the renter is right there working with you at your community versus them deciding to decide at somebody else's apartment community because typically when somebody decides to decide, the place that they're physically standing when that happens in their mind gets the lease. So you want them to shift gears from shopping to decide to decide right there with you. It's gonna help you get a lot more closes. Okay, we're finally there. The last piece of the perfect leasing process you have to close the lease. And this is an area where a lot of property managers and leasing agents that I work with that either come to our online training at leasinguniversity.com or during our live training events, they don't understand the difference between closing and selling. And we really help them understand that. Two totally different areas, two totally different technologies. You need to have a very, very easy to learn, easy to practice, easy to rehearse system for closing the lease, okay? Closing the lease, it's a no-brainer for you and your process, that's what you get paid to do. You don't get paid to show apartments, you get paid to lease apartments. So we've gotta have a close. Now where does the perfect leasing process, the leasing university system for closing the lease match up in the renter's journey? Well, this is probably the most critical piece. A true leasing professional has a closing process where they're able to dictate the close. They're able to drive the close, yet in the prospect's mind, it is their decision. They don't feel pressure. They don't feel manipulated. They said, hmm, this is the right place for me to lease, and it is 100% my decision. When you have a close that drives them to decide on their own versus manipulates them into deciding, pressures them into deciding, or uses some sort of tricks and gimmicks into tricking them into deciding, you're going to find that your renter is a lot happier. They've completed their journey all by themselves and it was their decision. They become a much more happy resident and they're much more likely to renew that lease. So you're not having to go through this entire process over again next year with somebody else. I hope this makes sense. A lot of information covered. 
Whatever you need as far as questions, follow up, simply leave them in the comments below. I read every single one of your comments. Again, my name is Matt Easton. I'm the founder of Leasing University. Until the next video, I want you to be great and I want you to get those leases. I'll see you soon. Five hundred of the top property management companies work with Leasing University. We conduct 100 live apartment leasing training events per year. We help our clients sign over 100,000 additional leases per year, adding $2 billion to their revenue. Leasing consultants that have access to Leasing University lease seven times more apartments than the rest of the industry. Leasing University is new. Leasing University is game changing and Leasing University will get you seven times more leases. Listen, the apartment industry has changed. The way people rent apartments today is totally different than it was yesterday. Today's renter has more access to information and they've got more choices in apartments than they've ever had before. If you're struggling to get leases, it's most likely not your location, it's not your amenities, and it's not your price. It's your sales training. If you've been made to sit through a boring class or unrealistic online training, and you're not getting the skills that you need to work with renters, to help you handle their objections, and to make sure you close the lease and rent the apartment, well, that ends today with Leasing University. Our simple, fun, and exciting step-by-step -step online training and live events will give you the skills and confidence that you need to lease seven times more apartments. Earn your certified leasing consultant credential in less than 30 days with Leasing University. Simply click on the link to get started and head over to leasinguniversity.com now to start your training.